The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program, depending on their content. Good afternoon. It seems like they left me a good amount of time. I don't know if I need all of it. Uh, this is a good way to end the uh, uh, session talking about some confinement model that we can use for uh, uh, <coughs> unconventional uh, columns. Uh, in the morning session, which part one of this uh, two sessions, uh, Ahmed talked about some uh, abacus modeling for cross spiral, uh, which where he can use for uh, uh, blast uh, uh, loading. Uh, well, here we're going to talk about, there are a few models or confining models that in the literature, uh, which some of the uh, previous speakers also talked about, like for example, Mander model, but there is nothing that we can use uh, for different uh, uh, configuration of spirals. And what, what we're doing here, we're looking at using two spirals crossing each other uh, instead of one spiral, which I'm sure you guys have heard about it or um, uh, read about it, but uh, here we're going to focus on how to come up with a simple model that can predict the compressive strength versus the strain of such concrete confined using, uh, using uh, cross spirals. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to take one of the best representing models in the literature, which is the Mander model, and try to modify the parameters where we can predict uh, the behavior or the compressive stress strain behavior of such concrete or such columns. Then we also need to do that for two types of concrete, the normal strength and the high strength, which you know that now high strength concrete is becoming more common. You don't hear about normal strength concrete a lot, but uh, uh, anything above 4 KSI before used to be something, you know, uh, people panic about it, but now, you know, anything above 6 or 7 is, uh, KSI is, uh, is normal. So we, we would like to come up with some models that will work for cross spiral using normal and high strength concrete and compare it to uh, some experimental results. This research is uh, it's a result of uh, many uh, years of, of work, but at the end we were able to come up with some uh, prediction for the strength and the ductility. Uh, so we've tested many columns before with normal strength uh, and high strength, and then we looked at uh, the parameter of existing models and then put everything in the blender and come up with something that at least we can feel good till somebody very smart come and bring, you know, come up with a, a lot better model that we can use. So in, in general, let, let me maybe skip a few of these to show you. Uh, uh, this is a typical cross-section in a reinforced concrete column where you have the uh, circular cross-section you have the longitudinal rebars, which you see them here. This is a elevation. And then you, s you have the spiral or the hoops, whatever you, you're providing. And then uh, you have the cover and then the, uh, the core, which is the, the area of the concrete or the uh, volume of the concrete that is confined with the spiral or the hoops. Now, what, what we have proposed before is to use two spirals instead of one. So basically, uh, we use two spirals instead of one, we can use two, so going opposite to each other. Now, how do we come up with the prediction of the strength-strain diagram of, of such concrete confined uh, with two spirals? So we look at the core area, how much is the core area, how much is the effective core area based on the spacing of the, the pitch of the, of the spiral, and then 
what do you start, what are you starting with, what type of concrete, what type of F prime C, and then you can predict the, the effectiveness ratio, which is based on how, how effective is the lateral reinforcement confining the, the whole core. Is it the, how, what's the percentage of the core it's really contributing to the confinement? So then you calculate how much is, uh, is the confining, confinement to pressure, which is also a function of how much lateral reinforcement and what's the pitch or the spacing of the spiral or the hoops. So here is the, the overall column. Here is the core area. And then it depends on what's the spacing of the spiral and then the, the diameter of the of the wire itself. All these parameters contribute to the effectiveness ratio and the confinement pressure as well. Basically after you, this is the previous one, after you start compressing the column, then the, the cover, the outside part of the concrete is not confined. So start pressing on it, expands, the cover crushes and then spools, then that's out then you end up only with the core. The core, since it's confined with the lateral reinforcement, is not going to be expanding as much as it wants, then uh, it's going to remain intact till the spiral or the lateral reinforcement rupture, or you lose some of it. So that's, you know, and this is basically what, what you do to follow some of the uh, exi existing uh, models as you calculate the uh, core area and then which is a function of the uh, of the circle area and also which the circle area here it's based on how much is the ds ds is the diameter of the core area which is uh, the distance center to center of the of the spiral itself now how much is the effectiveness of that it depends on uh, the spacing because here this, this is the spiral or the hoop. Between the two, there will be some kind of lost area here because it's, it's going to curve and uh, uh, some of it will be unconfined. So how much the spacing is going to, the, the, the smaller the spacing, the, the closer this area to the core area, the, the total core area. Now here you can calculate that by taking reinforcement out of it, all these three bars because it's part of the area. And then uh, it depends on, on, uh, on the spacing of this, of the pitch, then you can calculate the effectiveness of the, here it is, here it's uh, the Socrat more uh, uh, clear. Uh, it depends on the S, the smaller the S, the less those small parabolic volumes that will be taken out of the core area to calculate the effectiveness. And if it's a spiral or a hoop, it depends on, on, on the configuration, then you can calculate the effectiveness. And here is the effective area, which is calculated based on, the again, the core area and then the pitch. As I said, the smaller the S prime, the closer the effective area, confined area to the core area. And this is, you've seen most of you, if you've done some calculation for uh, uh, confinement. This is Mander or any, any model you use, you have to use the effective uh, area. And again, this is a function of the DS and the S prime and uh, um, uh, pi. Now, if, if, if you have only one spiral, then it's good. Uh, we already have the equation for it. But if you have cross a spiral, then you need to, it's going to cross each other, you need to come up with a different method or different equation for the effective core. And to do that, we use the angle phi, which is just a measure from the center to an arc length, and then integrate over the whole thing, and then of integrate over the length of the, of the uh, column based on angle uh, gamma. So for single, column, or single spiral, sorry, uh, here is what we did, and then you integrate over the overall circle, which is 0 to 2 pi, and then we found out the effective area, and then we use it to put in the phi, it's in here, you 
Calculate fee, come here, you calculate how much is the AE using this uh, integration. Now, for a cross spiral, it's a little bit different. What you could do, some people, or what we've done in some of the predictions, is we use the equation for confinement for single spiral, but we take S as half the single spiral. If you're doing two spirals, S, S, then half. Well, this is just a rough prediction. It worked, you know, with some error, but it's something simple you can at least start with. But what we wanted to do here is to come up with different parameters for Mander model by integrating the geometry when you have two spirals, two spirals crossing each other. So one's going this way, the other one's going the other side. So basically, if you take this S, S, then you go S over two, you can predict the confinement for cross spiral with pitch of an S. However, we want to come up with a different parameters. And that's what we did again. Same thing. Uh, we integrate, calculate phi based on the location, go through the integration, and come up with the A, okay? The effective A. And here is some of the calculations. You have the hoop, you have the single spiral, uh, and then you have the uh, double spiral and the double modified. We went through all these calculations, different uh, assumptions, and this is the one we're focusing on, is the modified one. And then we compared several equations with several models to the experimental uh, data. Now we have tested 21 columns, but with different configurations. We have uh, single spirals, normal, we have four single, six double, high strength, we have a 21 in total, 14 double, uh, seven single, and we compare them. This is the normal strength, which uh, varies between, you know, so it's about 40, 35 to 40 uh, megapascal. Single, double, this is the normal strength. These are the data for the normal strength. So here when you say 25S6, it means it's a single spiral. The pitch is 25 millimeters, about an inch. And we have uh, six longitudinal reinforcement. Same thing here if you say 50 cross a spiral. So you have two spirals crossing each other, each one pitched at 50 millimeter, six longitudinal. So basically this column and this column have equivalent reinforcement, longitudinal and uh, uh, lateral. For the high strength concrete, we went up to 67 megapascal, and we tested the 21 of them. And this type, the high strength concrete, we also varied the longitudinal reinforcement. So some have eight, some 10, some 12, some 14, to also see what's the effect of the longitudinal ratio on the, on the behavior. So also we calculated the uh, octagonal uh, stress. We went through the, the envelope and the tau octagonal, and uh, we looked at Mander behavior and the data we have, and this is the Mander model. This is the uh, confined concrete, this is the unconfined, then we multiply it by a, an equation, which gives you a factor to bump up the uh, F prime C, where you get the F prime C C. So we put all the data together. Mander, we also looked at Bing model. Mander model was mainly derived for normal stress, strength concrete with single spiral. Bing model was derived for single spiral but for high strength concrete. So we're trying to combine the two, come up with a new parameters that will fit our new cross spiral and also for high strength concrete. So we went through all the uh, statistical analysis and uh, we came up, and this is the, uh, for high strength, this is how it's gonna look like. And uh, at the end, we made sure it fits the envelope and we're converging around the envelope there. And uh, basically, this is the Mander model. If this is the unconfined concrete, confines gonna increase the strength, the, the, the strain, ductility, and this is the Bing model, which is the same thing, but you know, just a different shape. There is a li linear part 
here after it reaches the F' prime CC. So here is the, the analysis for the experimental results we had, and then Mander using S. So if I use Mander with, for a cross spiral, I can either use half the spacing or I can double the area of the spiral, one way or the other. Uh, then the proposed model, then the Bing with 2A, Bing with S over 2, and Bing with a new effective factor. And here's where we are. The experimental is the dashed line, and the proposed model is the uh, uh, purple, okay, which is uh, uh, somewhere here. And uh, the rest are, this is Mander, the red and the light blue. Uh, no, the green and the red. This is the green and this is the red. So you can see the Mander is, is good, but it's, it's uh, uh, not as good as what, you know, it's not as close as you want to the experimental model. This is the normal strength. Uh, but it's, it's uh, Bing, the two, it's oh, also here. So they are okay, but they are not really close enough because it's a cross spiral. They weren't designed or proposed for, derived for cross spiral. So we're getting closer to the experimental using the new parameters uh, for a cross spiral. Normal strength, also for, this is a different uh, uh, pitch, is the same thing, the, the proposed is getting closer to the uh, experimental. Some Mander or Bing, they represent the experimental uh, as close as uh, uh, possible, but still what we did in terms of modification, it's uh, giving us a little bit better uh, results. But again, this is something wasn't part of the derivation for uh, those existing models. More results, which is getting also representing our, uh, uh, or meeting our objectives, the proposed model, it's representing uh, the experimental uh, uh, results in a better way. High strength, and again, Mander model was not derived for high strength. So you see that Mander model over predict the, uh, uh, the results. Uh, however, Bing is a closer to the experimental because it was derived for experimental. Uh, however, the proposed model, it's the one that is closer to the uh, experimental results, which that's what we were trying to do is to uh, fit our experimental data or statistically come up with an equation uh, to represent the experimental data. More high strength, again, same conclusions. And at the end, what we did, we come up with you know, new parameters that will use Mander model. And those parameters will represent the cross spiral for normal and high strength concrete. Nothing wrong, we are not really uh, saying that either Mander or Bing are not good, no, but they were derived for different configurations. However, we're trying to modify them to uh, represent the cross spiral that uh, we are proposing. And uh, based on what we're saying, um, uh, Mander is good for normal strength concrete. Uh, Bing is good for high strength concrete. However, the proposed model, it represents normal and high strength when you use the uh, uh, cross spiral. This is a quick uh, uh, summary of what we've been doing. And uh, if you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer them. All right.